Boys. 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 Five of six. Five of six. We're saving the veggies for last. Um, I I don't think I said that I was going to do that so far, but I'm saving the veggies for last because they seem like they're going to be... They're, they're like the highlight of this. The title literally has veggies in it. I have to save them for last. Uh, so last time we did Nocturne over here, which was bad ending central. There was literally not a single good ending in that whole thing, which <laughs> sucks to suck, I guess. So next, we're going to be here, there be humans. All right, the last one was about the, that there was no humans. This one is that there are humans. Ooh, fancy. My scout is going crazy. My normal trouble-free devices are breaking down one by one. Are we drifting backwards? It looks like it. I don't even have time to fix the module before I get a warning about a new one failing. Grab a multi-tool and open up the next panel. Oof, okay, it's got that rough sketch vibe again, like the, uh, the elf did. It's not my first year in long-range intelligence, but this has never happened to me or any of my scouts, I know. I haven't even heard rumors or myths about it. The search unit usually consists of young people, but... It's specially made so that young people would, would cool their door, our door and realize that space is not just about feats and ventures, but about boring and tedious work. Several years of dull routine kill any impulses to be a hero or break the rules. It only seems that the scheme has failed. I came across something extraordinary, and these oddities weren't waiting for me on a distant unknown planet, but on my own ship. Seems as if my scout was attacked by some invisible gremlins. On the one hand, I was happy that the monotonous look-alike days are over, but on the other hand, I'm starting to fear that the scout will simply fall apart. I have to search for some planet to lead the ship on so I can start searching for the cause of this madness. Roy's head turned to look straight at us. And we said the cause of the madness. He is much more animated than all the rest of the characters have been so far. It, I just noticed that. However, so far I've only managed to eliminate the symptoms of this unknown disease which threatened to destroy my ship and myself along with it. But suddenly it all ends, the last problem is fixed, and the calm is silent. Well, well, well. What is that all about? Does anyone know? I'm out of ideas. Yes. After a month of being alone, I started occasionally talking to myself. Sometimes I don't even notice it. For cadets and young specialists, it's a sign of coolness. Turn off the ship's chat, buddy. Coolness. <laughs> it's all about being cool when you're in space, bro. The charter did not forbid this, but we were warned that a long time without communication with at least a computer could adversely affect the mental state of the lone pilot. Many probably gave up and turned on the inter interlocutor, but I was stubborn. stubborn. And I don't know how to lie. I have to be honest. A colleague could ask me during my vacation how I managed to be alone, and I would answer honestly that I couldn't stand it when talking to the computer. Or I'll start to crumple, which is guaranteed to give me away. I'm not a cool lone space wolf anymore, but a simple cargo. I thought having the computer off was a sign of coolness. I'd rather be patient. Right now, for example, I'm distracting myself from my loneliness by keeping busy. I'm not up to talking, okay? Hmm. Who am I arguing with then? Us, the readers. We don't talk to ourselves, and we're okay, right? I'll take the silence as consent. <laughs> There's so much work piled up. Okay, stop. Why is it so quiet all of a sudden? For a few moments, I tensely clutch the multi-tool in my hand and stare at the virtual screen, but everything is intensely quiet. I could sit down in a chair, but instead I decide to take a break, sitting on the ribbed floor, leaning against the wall. I close my eyes for a second, and... Another warning sound wakes me up. Without opening my eyes, I start to fumble with my hand on the floor in search of a multi-tool. Only then do I notice the signal has a different tone. It's not another malfunction this time. I open my eyes and stare at the comm. Oop, flip. 
Mayday, mayday. To anyone who can hear me. Luca Zelen... Zelenaya is speaking. Why, why can names never just be simple? Why can't you just be Bob Smith? I made an emergency landing on an uninhabited planet. Coordinates are included in the message. The ship needs urgent repairs. I'm asking for help. Then, the question, the message starts repeating itself. I give it a few listens, watching my ex's face. Right. This just keeps getting weirder. Oh, okay, apparently that's his ex. So my former girlfriend has, has an accident somewhere nearby. What an incredible coincidence. I forgot what a cutie she was. Why'd we break up again? <laughs> God. <laughs> Stay single, boys. Stay single, boys. Well, well, well. What of the miracles are in store? First the ship started acting up, and now this. And, they told me that long-range scout missions are a boring routine. I can't wait to prove them wrong. The chances of such events are close to zero, like literally. Long-range recon, huge unexplored space sectors, and incredible distances. It's like traveling at random into the African jungle and meeting a next-door neighbor there. Actually, no. The probability of what is happening is much lower. I can't even find a proper example. Although, I kept my positioning at long range. I kept my position at long range recon after our breakup. It's just that we started flying different ships, no longer being in the same crew. It could be that we're led to the same sector, but still, the distance is calculated in tens or even hundreds of light years. These are unexplored areas of space, not some country road. I do an express diagnostic, everything is functioning fine, and then enter the coordinates from the message. Time for a reunion. Scout Neon Lukyanov is rushing to the rescue. Dot dot dot. There is no planet. It's a gas giant larger than Jupiter. There are several large satellites too, but the planetoid whose coordinates I've been given is Nowhere to be found. No device can detect it. Except, I see it with my own eyes. My ship has already entered its orbit. I have to enter the data manually. The automatic system denies all of my inputs. I can't even detect the gravity of the planetoid. But the orbit turns out to be stable, which almost causes the onboard computer to freeze. Thankfully, it just started to treat the planet as an anomaly and decided to trust the pilot on the matter. Not like there are any other options. The orbit is pretty stable after all, even if this can't be computed by artificial brains. To be honest, all this nonsense doesn't fit in my brain either, but... Because, somewhere on the surface, I've decided to let that slide for now and manually land on the surface. Then, suddenly, as if out of nowhere, the planet just appears. Oh well well. Playing hide and seek. Giving up, are you? Of course, I spotted you already. The Navy computer finally sees it, analyzes the data given to it from the ship's sensors, and tries to take back control of the ship. No, no, my friend. I'd rather do it manually. You might suddenly go blind and deaf again. The AI is still disabled, but the control systems hear me perfectly and don't argue. All the arguments uh, are in my favor. I quickly search for the emergency landing point of Vika's ship and head there. While the scout is landing, one thing sticks in my mind. Well, this is so unnatural. It's actually awesome. Awesome. Cool. Right, Neon? It's so cool. An uninhabited planet. A rescue mission. What if there's life there? Here there be tigers. Although, I doubt there'll be any tigers here. But it could be people instead. At least one of them is here. Vika. What if the local fauna is humanoid? An uninhabited island. Contact. Rescue the local population from... Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Judging by the sensors, the planet is absolutely lifeless. Only sand dunes and rocks. Including practically terrestrial air. Why is that? There are no plants, no water reservoirs with algae. But the air is almost Earth-like. Although, no, that's not correct. No foreign impurities are detected. So the composition of the air is similar to that of my scout ship. Hmm. Oh, well, well, well. I'm getting curious. Who could possibly install such equipment on such far away uninhabited planets? Even the percentage and proportions are identical to a standard scout ship. 
oddities keep coming. Oh, this is on an uninhabited planet. What if there's also life here? So much has already happened to me that all my colleagues would be jealous. I'm also saving my ex, who, for some reason, doesn't respond to calls. I hope nothing happened to her. Oh, it makes me feel a bit uneasy. Yes, we didn't get along very well, but we didn't hate each other. If someone was my worst enemy, I would still risk my life to save them. They're not my enemy, that's why I'm worried. Emony. Vika, darling, just stay put. Help is already nearby. I lean on the afterburner so I won't collide with her ship with the gravity beam. I land 500 yards away from her scout ship. Once landed, I immediately rush to the airlock. On the run, I check my spacesuit. It's filled with energy to the brim. An emergency supply of air lasting a couple of hours is distributed in cells all over the entire surface. The converters are working perfectly. The suit can make a breathing mixture out of any kind of atmosphere, even a poisonous one. And making a spacesuit look like everyday clothes is all the rage now. We're not a military organization, so we can make our spacesuits look like pajamas. Because favorite ones are retro themed, for example. More precisely, just the upper half, w without underwear. Alright, let's stop with the pleasant memories. It's out of place now. The airlock seems okay, so I can go out. Run around butt ass naked with no pants on, bro. Gross. Put pants on. Put on some goddamn pants. The air outside the ship is identical to what's inside, but I probably shouldn't believe the sensors that didn't spot an entire planet a few minutes ago. I jump out of the airlock and quickly look around. It's a desert. There's sun, dunes, and some boulders that look like cow patties. Hehe. <laughs> Not a very appetizing sight. They look. They look. They don't look like cow patties to me. I, I don't know. Poopy. At least not for those who've lived a farming life. That's a stupid comparison. I rushed to Vika's ship. An exact replica of mine. Her scout ship is tilted slightly. Was there a crash landing? I have to hurry. Yet it feels good to finally leave the cramped cabin and go for a run on the surface of a planet. You're not an uninhabited one such as this. It's so spacious, so beautiful. Especially these big moons. The neighboring planetoids of the giant planet. And then... This pleasant wind in my face. Wait, what? Wind? Did I not turn on the helmet's force field? Can't be. I look at the charge indicator. Zero. Even the indicators don't work. I hold my breath and turn around. It's too far, I can't reach it. But I was breathing before. The air indeed is the same as the ship's. The sensor didn't lie. But the strange planet has presented another surprise. Either the indicator is messed up, or the energy keeps disappearing somewhere. At least I'm alive. I can continue my rescue mission. Vika, here I come. How did the cow pie get bigger? I saw that. In the corner of my eye, I spot movement. Something has changed. But what exactly? Same sand dunes, same boulders, although. I remember this particular one being much farther than me from before. Or am I mistaken? Hey, hey, hey. I continue moving, walking this time. There it is again. The nearest giant cow patty became closer. Is that some kind of local life form? A living silicon stones? I feel uneasy. After all, I'm in a non-working, practically useless spacesuit. I could consider myself naked, and now this? Just in case, I freeze. Suddenly, it reacts to my movement. No, it doesn't. The boulder comes real close to me. What should I do? Shall I make contact with a cow patty now? Does it even have some kind of mind? And if it does, I doubt we'll be able to communicate in some way. I have no idea how to talk to boulders. <laughs> My hand reaches out to the matte surface by itself, but I immediately pull it back. There's no protective field on my hands. You never know what... Ugh. The stone sways and moves slightly towards me, as if it's stretching. Am I being sniffed? I'm feeling numb. Then slowly I turn around, ready to run, and there's no time, I don't make it. I'm engulfed in darkness, and I cease to hear the wind and feel its warmth. Did I get eaten? Nice one, Neon. The rescue mission was successful. Sorry, honey. I couldn't help you. I hope you'll be able to repair the ship by yourself and fly away from this strange and, as it seems, dangerous planet. May everything be fine with you. I was prepared to die, but nothing changed. 
Almost. Suddenly I feel someone else's presence, as if someone unbelievably huge is looking at me, seeing every bit of my body and hearing my thoughts. Suddenly there's some commotion going around on around me. Or is it me moving? Is this the end? Are they going to I squeeze my eyes shut? Is that like a weird alien blowjob? And then I open them when I feel a push. I plop on the sand and see the boulder deliberately moving away from me. He said you taste like shit, bro. Did it try to eat me and I was not as taste and then got spat out? You. Yep. Well, if you get eaten, you have two ways out at least. I don't want to think which one led me to the exit. You get pooped or puked? Poopy. Aha, the poopy pooped on him. I jump up and want to cry joyful. I'm alive, I wasn't eaten, but then I realize it's far too early for parties. I have no idea what filth I have in my body now, or even inside. Now I'll go infect Vika with it? No way. I'd better return to the scout. I turn around and head back to my ship to have a full medical test. I already violated so many paragraphs of the charter. I'll try to comply with this one at least. Medical equipment found nothing. Even the sand in my hair was sterile. If they ate me, they didn't chew me on me or even drool on me. Nor organic or inorganic matter. Nothing at all. Sand is inorganic matter. Well, let's pretend then that the boulder is some kind of local natural phenomena. And not a living being. It's not dangerous, and I can safely continue my rescue mission. Uh, hi? Yeah, same. Same with that horrified look, bro. Where did I put the multi-tool? Hey, Double, have you seen the tools? I jump back and get into a fighting stance. Right before me is me, an exact copy of myself. Here's the real alien contact. The locals came out of their underground dungeons and took on my appearance to, and to try talking to me with my voice in my language. Why are you so jumpy? Are you psycho or something? Fine, I'll try to find it myself. Let's see. The last malfunctioning unit was... Here it is. Then Fake Neon takes out my multi-tool from his clothes and heads for the airlock. Hey, where do you think you're going? Doppelganger turns around and looks at me like I'm some sort of fool. Say Vika, of course. I need to fix her ship. Don't touch anything here, okay? I'll make contact with your race a bit later, when I'm finished. My, my, you look exactly like me. Did you take my look for a reason? Nice move. And then Fake Neon disappears into the airlock, leaving me indignantly gulping air. Why, he... He took me for an alien? More precisely, for a local resident. And it turns out that he considered himself the real deal. What bullshit. Of course, I'm not the smartest guy in long-range recon, but... There's no fool among us. Ah, sus. Therefore, I immediately realized that the clone was created by the cow patty from before. It probably ate me, did some kind of research, and then spat me out. And then it made another copy of me. Why do I consider myself an original? Well, because I got scared and this happy clone didn't even flinch. So what? There's a copy of some kind. We'll talk later. I need to save Vika. That's right, Vika. I rush after him and catch up with the fake neon on the way to Vika's ship walk right next to him, deciding to talk a bit on the way. I feel a little bit creepy and weird talking to myself, although I'm pretty used to it. You've done nothing but that for the last couple of months, you said it yourself. Hey, what's your name? Neon Lukyanov, Long Range Recon Pilot. Right, hmm. Why weren't you surprised when you saw me? Hmm. That thing made so many of you already, and new ones keep coming. I've already had enough scares, but... I too got in a fighting stance back then, <laughs> Karate Kid. Looks pretty ridiculous to be honest. Work on your stance, by the way. So there's just a ton of him running around. That that's that's what that's what we're getting at here. <laughs> there's just a butt ton of him just running around. Oh my god. And that's when the real horror hit me. So it turns out that I could be a clone. Well, yes, if they all have. We all have identical memories, and everybody remembers the same thing. How was he captured and then spat out of the boulder? And now he goes to Vika's rescue, just like me. Then it turns out that, no, I shouldn't think of that now. It won't take long to go crazy. There's also no point in talking to this guy either. 
It may turn out to be the original, but that doesn't matter right now. I follow the one who took over my multi-tool, or does it belong to him? I'm still a bit shaky, but I decided to pull myself together. There's so many miracles in the universe, we'll deal with it later. The main thing right now is to get away from this planetoid. Fast. Man, this is fucking weird, dude. <laughs> Bro, we're just gonna see like a whole ass screen of like emo Tim over here, just like in, just like floating into the planet, just poo getting pooped out of poop. Together with Vika, of course. Hmm. Wait, what if she's one of them too? Hey Neon, did Vika get out of her ship yet? Thank the stars, no. Otherwise, a crowd of her clones would be running around right now too. It's a nice sight, of course, but how am I going to find the real one later and save her? Yeah, thoughts are the same. I still have a chance to get ahead of my copies and save her. Maybe it really doesn't matter who I am, the original or a copy. If we're all identical, ugh. I'd like to run tests on him. Suddenly he is somehow different. Well, well, well. What kind of fun run is this? I follow my double's gaze. A whole crowd of fake neons is running straight at us. And a bit ahead is Vika, trying to run away from them. She got out of her scout ship. That's not good. Let's just hope she won't bump into the Coney Patty. <laughs> Imagine just 500 like motherfuckers just all chasing you down. Hello, ex-girlfriend. I'm here to save you. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. Okay, you go to her ship now, and I... Why are you being bossy, clone? Don't argue, there's no time for that. You have the multi-tool, so it's up to you to fix the scout, and meanwhile, I'll take care of her. Those fools might have scared her. Perhaps you're right. I'll fix everything and find you two with the scout sensors. Okay, let's do it. All right, that that clone's on our side. All the rest of the clones, who knows? And fake neon heads to the ship, and I'm left waiting for the approaching Vika. Seems like I'm a pretty reasonable and nice guy after all, and at least it's easy to negotiate with me. I can't help but smile at this stupid thought. <laughs> oh shit. She's getting chased. <laughs> <laughs> as the girl's running past, I join her and smile happily as I run. Hi honey, I'll follow you. I see you could use some help. Back off you freak! I stumble and almost bury my nose in the sand. What a greeting. I was going to save her. I want to help, what are you doing? They want to help too, all of them, back off! And she quickens her pace. And where are you going to such a hurry, to my ship? Vika doesn't answer. That, that, Vika is spelled differently than the other Vikas. Vika doesn't answer, but I take a closer look at my ship and suddenly see that several cl clones are already coming out of my scout. By the way, there are some waiting for you there too. Perhaps we should find another way, behind that dune? Vika doesn't answer, but changes the direction. I follow her example. For some time, we hid from the sights of the pursuers. Okay, what are we gonna do now? Get down, fast. I'm gonna punch you. That's a great idea, but still, you'd better get down. I'll bury you in the sand. You won't be able to outrun them. They have more stamina. Get down, bitch. The girl throws a distressful look at me, then looks to the side of the dune, from where the pursuers might appear at any time, and finally makes a decision. She drops into the sand and starts burying herself in it. I get on my knees, press my chest to the ground, spread my arms, and push off with my legs, pretending I'm some kind of bulldozer. Then again and again, that's it. Turns out to be a really nice mound. Finally, I brush some sand off her face, leaving only her mouth exposed so she can breathe. Just imagine just everything with this. <laughs> You'd still breathe in sand, I'm assuming. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh shit, it's the Black Parade. I jump back a few steps, fall on the ground, and grab my cr crotch with my hands, just in time. That moment a crowd of my doubles shows up behind the dune. I start rolling on the ground, howling. It immediately attracts the attention of all the pursuers. What happened? Are you okay? Oh, she kicks so hard. So much pain in my balls. She went there behind the dune. Just be careful, guys. Watch her legs. The whole crowd rushes in the direction I showed them, while covering their sensitive spot with their hands. Looks quite funny. They're all just holding their dicks running towards her now. <laughs> Only the last one slows down a little bit to give me a pitiful look. Do you need help? No, it's fine. I feel better already. It, it's, it looks like it's not so bad. I'm going to the ship, to the sick bay. Okay, 
Go to Vika's scout then. There are only a few of us left there. It won't hurt to get extra help. Then this fake Neon joins the others. When he's out of sight, I quickly dig up the girl and help her out. She looks around in search of her saviors. And when she confirms they're gone, she finally calms down a little bit. Let's go hide behind that rock over there. That way they won't see us when they come back. Okay, let's go. Just don't get too close. I clench my teeth, but don't say a word. She's so mean. We're sitting behind the rock, catching our breath and looking at each other. She, with alertness. I, with resentment. The rock remained stable. It didn't try to sniff us, but I warned Vicka to stick about it anyways. Don't look at me like that. I'm the real one. At least I think so. They think they're the real ones, so stay away from me. Silly, I want to help. They want to help too, I told you. Even if you're real, it's all your fault. You got into this mess. Spawn clones. Do you know how scared I was when you stayed under the scout with several copies? Can't argue with that. I got into this mess, that's right. Right into a big mess of your cow patty that now continues to clone me. It's amazing how Vika found the right words for it. Yeah, you're right. I got into a mess. Always been careless, irresponsible, stupid, and obnoxious. I just want to disappear, right into thin air, just so I can't hear her ridiculous accusations. Finally, I remember why we broke up. I just couldn't stand it anymore. I couldn't hold it in, and I raised my voice at Vika. Okay, stop. That's enough. I got tired of it back then, when we were part of a team on a ship. I won't put up with your insults anymore. You don't want to be with me. Go on, stay here, and let the others save you. I'm leaving. I start to get up, but Vicka grabs my arm, pulls me down, and even moves closer to me. I sit down in the sand again. You're the real deal. What? You're real. You decided to leave me. And these, they just keep running after me, trying to help. Please save me. They wouldn't do that. I wonder why they behave like this. Who are they anyways? I'm afraid it really is my fault. You see, when I was eaten, I thought I was dying. My last thought was the regret of not being able to help you, to save you. Perhaps that's why it turned out to be so important in the heads of the copies. That's so romantic. Your last thought was about me. Wait, what? You were eaten? Are you just calling him a bunch of names? Now you're saying he's romantic? Come on, bro. Wow, so she realized that I was in danger too and didn't fixate on something that flattered her. It's such a nice change. Damn it. Look at my ex, but for some reason my gaze falls on her slender legs. What them legs do be? Oh shit. You just made a realization. And again, that reminds me of the fact that she can, she's completely naked under her spacesuit. Now she's... Vika turns restless. Getting herself more comfy. It makes me hot and I hastily turn away. I briefly tell her everything that had happened to me up to that point. Starting with a series of malfunctions in the scout and ending with the current awkward moment. Awkward for me. Vika, as usual, was not embarrassed by anything. It turns out that, exact, the exa that the exact same thing happened to her, and she, too, decided to land on the planet to carry out repairs and relative safely. Safety, on the surface, and not in outer space. Well, well, well. Looks like the breakdowns were caused remotely to lure us here. When you landed, my breakdown stopped. My scout didn't even see the planet, because I was no longer needed. You were already on the planet. Why didn't you get out of the ship? The planet stopped hiding from me, so I just came out. I wonder why this planet needs us. When that patty swallowed me, I felt as if something was analyzing me. Every cell of my body, every thought, every wish. Clearly it wasn't some simple boulder. I was being studied by someone huge, a whole mountain, or even a whole planet. Vika shivers at me, a little scared. Just you and your stupid fantasies. You made all those things up because you were frightened. Perhaps I did, but if this planet is intelligent, then it would probably want to have some sort of living things. Something at least a little intelligent. People, for example. I suspect that even the air and the atmosphere was copied from what was in your scout so that people can live here. Why does the planet need people? Hardly for food, it produces us itself. Or precisely you. Maybe it's just lonely, this planet. Imagine that you're flying through the cosmic void completely alone. There's no one for hundreds of light years with whom you could... Enough, stop it. 
I obediently fall silent and cast a surprised look at the girl. She looks more scared now than the time she was running from my clones. I've gotten into her. I'm afraid of loneliness. I didn't tell anyone about it. You're the first. You left me. You're the one who kicked me out. It was as if she hadn't heard me. Am I talking too quietly? This novel is considerably less um exciting than the rest of them so far. This novel is um a little... It feels sl a lot slower paced than the rest of them. Probably because there's less people involved in it. When you left, our crewmates told me something at the spaceport bar. You know, they like to tell horror stories, myths. I don't know what it's called. So one day I heard this story about the black astronaut. I grin, but I decided not to comment on anything. Let her speak. As long as she doesn't nag me more. He was an ordinary astronaut, only his spacesuit was completely black. So black that when he got detached from the ship during the repair of the sensors, no one noticed him against the background of the black space. He didn't have time to fix the sensor. His and his partner didn't notice him. A black dot against the background of cosmic darkness. So he flew into space, doomed to certain death. Then, he appears near those who come out. Stop it. Sounds like It sounds so childish that it's hard for me to hold back my laughter. The girl glares at me with angry eyes and then turns away resentfully. Wait, so she's being serious? Can't be. Sorry, so what are you afraid of? Loneliness? Then why did you join a solo scout mission? Nika huffs and decides to give me a silent treatment for a while. After enough time passes, she decides to forgive me and finally continue her tale. I wanted to get rid of this fear. Well, you know, fighting fire with fire. Dummy. It doesn't work that way. I have a friend who's afraid of heights. To get rid of his fear, he started parachuting. With each jump, it kept getting scarier for him. It works for some people. What should I know? But you're right. I'd rather not be left alone in the ship. As you can see, my spacesuit isn't black. But even so, I would hardly be noticed in the background of space. And what's the worst case scenario? Have you ever heard of the sensors, all the sensors failing at once? It's impossible. Actually, it is possible. I landed here manually. Not one sensor was working at the time. Yeah, you're right. The planet is something else. But this is an exception for the rule. It wouldn't happen again. You have nothing to be afraid of. Still, you'd better stick with your crewmates. I hate to know that you're suffering from something. Vika squints at me, frowning. And suddenly she smiles. Her face smooths out, which makes me feel good. As if I took a sim stimulant pack. Thanks, Neon. And I thought you were mad at me for something after you broke up with me. What makes her think that I was the one who broke up with her? It was quite the opposite. Or does she just want to find an excuse to make me feel guilty and make herself a victim? And why? Take revenge on me? No, it doesn't make sense. Normal people don't. Actually, it's me who should be mad at you. It's you doing everything wrong, and I suffer because of it. How dare you accuse me of anything at all? Damn, what the fuck? 180'd. I got 180'd, bro. She egoed me. Damn, bro, he got 180'd, bro. She egoed him. What is this shit? Bro. It's my fault, you say, but it was you who crashed. Because I was alone, and I was alone because you were unbearable. So I'm to blame for everything. Even if I'm not around. Even if I'm hundreds of light years away. Well, of course! You could have asked for forgiveness instead of trying to blame me. That's how you've always been. Irresponsible, insensitive, selfish. I turn away and try not to listen to my ex's nonsense. I want to disappear again. Though, where would I go? If there are only two of us on the planet, we should stick together. Clones don't count. Perhaps they'll disappear the same way they appeared. I, on the other hand, can't disappear so easily. Without finishing my thought, I grab my axe and push her with all my strength. Get out of here, bitch! The anger on my fa the anger on her face is replaced by surprise before she slams into the rock and dissolves into it. Now she's probably inside of this inside and this weird planet is analyzing her. I close my eyes and prepare to wait. A few seconds later, someone approaches me from behind and pats me on the shoulder. Hey, are you okay? Didn't you tell me you were going to the ship? Yes, but first I have to check one theory. What theory? Are you completely crazy? Psycho. 
I was devoured by this thing. Now my copies will start appearing. You idiot. Do you want my clothes to f clones to flood everywhere too? I keep sitting quietly under the rock and can't help but smile. Vic isn't yelling at me. All the blame is directed towards that poor fellow that decided to help me. Yeah, I can relate. He probably wants to disappear now too. Just dissolve, cease to exist, become poof. A flash, a pop, and fake neon disappears. I even, I even envy him a little. I always wanted to disappear so I wouldn't have to listen to my ex's nagging anymore. Except now, she switches to me. What the hell happened to him? Did he just explode? You should warn me about this kind of stuff. Why are you grinning anyways? Is this your doing? Of course. Who else? You got into this- you got into some mess again, right? Man, she's like nice for two seconds, then she's mean again, then she's nice, then she's mean. Now she's just like consistently mean. I turn around and walk towards the ship. Vika follows me, without stopping to put blame on me for all that is happening right now. Out of the corner of my eye, I see new copies of Vika catch up with fake neons and start to nag them. It lasts until they explode with a flash. Still, they're so lucky. Poof. Gone. No one nags you anymore, but I can't hide from her, even by traveling thousands of light years away. Angry Vika, still muttering, follows me around my scout ship. Hey, I get it. Your clones can disappear at any moment. My clones, because of my last thought, have received a desire to tell you everything I think about those who feed me to aliens. And yours are so stupid they realize that disappearing is their only option. Wow, how cleverly she turned everything around. I'm so unbearable that the clones self-destruct. Sounds insulting, but... Your clones can't handle mine, even gives her some credit. Such nice clones she has. As Vic and I are taking off together, she was afraid to go to her scout. We watch our doppelgangers pop one after another, as if they were soap bubbles. My guess turned out to be correct. My intuition is working. Aren't you the clever one? I didn't get it at first, and it worked like a charm. Wait, how did you think that my clones would, were going to disappear too? You are afraid of loneliness. Without fake neons, fake Vicas will cease to exist too. Yeah, I, I told you. Wait a second. Why would they be lonely if there's lots of my clones left? We could have inhabited the whole planet. I don't think they would have gotten along very well. Why is that? For the same reason that the fake neons self-destructed. You're just unbearable. Damn, dude. <laughs> Bro, he just straight up said you're an annoying fucking bitch. That's why. <laughs> Bro, I can see why they broke up, dude. This, this whole novel is just the lesson of stay single, boys. Through and through, 110%. Vika stops for a moment, and then takes a very deep breath so that she can pour another sea of accusations on me. Again? God, have some mercy. I throw my hands in despair and clench my fists. What a pity that I turned out to be the original after all, and I can't just disappear like my clones. Those lucky bastards. I wonder if the one that's here right now is the real Vicar or just a copy. No, no, I'll let the scientists sort it out. And, according to the rules, I'll tell our contact while we approach... I'll tell about our contact while on uh, approach the long-range scout's peripheral base. Then, they'll get me to the quarantine zone. And I'll get just a few weeks of quiet and loneliness. Hmm. So, she's still mad at me because I broke up with her. More precisely, she broke up with me, but that's female logic. If she broke up with you, it's your fault. You couldn't stop her. So that means it was you who broke up with her, and it's still your fault. Okay. When we take a little break from each other in quarantine, when she forgets about my actions, which, by the way, saved us, I'll repaint her spacesuit black and tell her not to be afraid to wear it. After all, I'll always be close. The end. That one was incredibly shorter than all the other ones. Wow. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, that... It had a very slow middle, which was kind of like... Okay, 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 they're arguing, they're arguing, and like... They started to get along, and then just suddenly just... Boom! Like, 180. And they just hated each other. More specifically, she hated him, and he remembered why he did, couldn't stand her. And I don't blame him. She actually seemed really unbearable, so... 
I I don't even need to give a reason why you guys should stay single, boys. Just, just the whole last, like, what, however long this novel was, just was a, a screaming example of why you should definitely stay single. 100%, boys. Just do it. That, that was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that was the that was the best one so far, I think, actually. I actually think that was the best one so far. It had a good ending. He got, he got his loneliness and his quietness. He, he, he reminded himself why he didn't want to be with anybody and why he wanted to be by himself on his scout ship. Like, it was, it was a good one. It was a good one. All right, boys. You know what it is. 